Hi and welcome to the channel. In this video we're going to be attempting to make a carbon fibre roof for the 350Z. Stay tuned. How's everyone doing out there in YouTube land? Um, if you follow along the channel you'll know I've had a little bit of a break, just various different things caused me to stop making videos. Um, but I'm back and things have been happening in the background. So today I'm going to start the process of making the carbon fibre roof. If you've been eagle eye, you'll notice in the intro there that there already is, one, two, three, here we go. There already is a carbon fibre overlay that I've made for the, the car, testing out the mould that I'd produced. Um, this is a four layer carbon fibre part that fits really, really nicely as an overlay. Um, which will probably eventually sell, sell this. But this time I'm going to make it so that I can cut the more or less the full roof off and have the carbon overlapping down onto the metal and it will overlap around the, the back lip here. And it will, again on the windscreen it will come down and round so it's a full part. So I'll take you along the process. I've already moulded here. It has been prepped and because I used the mould before I only needed one more layer of this, which is a chemical release agent. So when you first have make the mould, you put six layers of this on and the part just pops straight out once you've made it. And after that, you just give it one or two coats at a time every time you pull apart. And I've got a little mould over here, it's a new mould, it's had six coats on it and this will be the first time I'm pulling some parts from that. So the next step on this is to gel coat it. So you have to spray some gel coat on, leave it for three hours before you can actually put anything else carbon fibre wise on top. So that's my next step, I'll show you what we're using. This is stuff from Easy Composites here in the UK. This is an epoxy compatible polyester gel coat that I've used on, well, I've used on these body parts here. It's been fine. It seals the, the front surface. Um, if you don't use it, then you sometimes get little pinholes, so when you come to clear coat it, the clear coat sinks into the pinholes where this stuff, it seals the top layer and it means any more preps you're doing to it makes it a little bit easier. And you can actually polish it up to a polished finish, but I'm going to put some clear coat over the, the entire car basically. So that's what I'm using that for, so we're just going to weigh out what we need here and get it into the spray gun. Quick edit, I forgot a step there, bit of fillies in on this one. So before you spray anything on the mould, you've got a perimeter around about it, you want to put some tacky tape on that so that you're not having to clean the overspray from the gel coat off to put the tacky tape on. So I'll take you through that step just now. So as the mould's already got the, the release agent on it, obviously this is quite a, a slippy surface. So what I use, I just use it at my work, it's some adhesive cleaner. A little bit of that on some kitchen roll and I just take maybe three quarters of an inch or so, just go round about it, clean clean that perimeter and then we can install the tacky tape, which is this stuff here, which is used to hold the vacuum bag in place. So it's easier to do that just now before we spray any gel coat on because once the gel coat sets, that's obviously a pain in the butt to clean off. So we'll do that first. Oh, right, so a little bit fumey in here, so I'm not going to take too long. I've got the big fan on, it's drawn the air out. And a lot of window open over here, giving some fresh air in, so... Yeah, looks quite nice. Um, the compressor did struggle a little bit to keep up, so I had to stop every now and again just to let it recharge. But yeah, everything seems okay. I think that should do the job. Um, I'll show you this little mould here anyway. It seems to be okay as well. The, the gun 
drips out the end, that's why you maybe see me with the paper towel, you can see there's a few splodges just see there, where it's kind of dripped out, but that'll be fine. This is just a prototype to see how it goes on. So yeah, that needs three hours to tack up and I need to go out and do a little bit of work today, so we'll come back to it tonight and we'll get some carbon fibre cut and laid into it. Well now at the fun bit, after waiting three, four hours now, um, starting to cut the carbon fibre for it. So I bought this very special, I suppose. Never used it before. It's the V-Weave, which you've maybe seen in some of the supercars. Looks pretty nice, I'll show you it. So, there's the camera deciding to go. There we go. So if you can see the weave there, it's split up the centre, which would be quite nice for a roof. Um, I only got two metres of this stuff. Uh, the weave is relatively straight, it's hard to tell. It does, on this side, it kind of sweeps about. Um, I'm not sure if that's something I can fix. Maybe I can, I'll try it. I can maybe p pull the fabric about a little bit. Um, so yeah, this bit here, I don't know, there's a little strange kind of indiscrepancy here. So what I'm going to do is cut so there's two metre of it, I'll cut this metre off and then hopefully the metre that's on the roll will be a bit straighter. And trying to keep it straight, putting it, in, putting it into here is probably going to be a nightmare, but oh, hey, you don't win if you don't try. So I'll put a little centre line each side to try and kind of fold it in. So what I'm going to do is a layer of that and I've got one by one fabric down here. And quite a lot of that, so I can put two layers of that in, so that'll be one two, three layers, and then I'm going to put this stuff in here, which is, you put that in between, and it kind of bulks out, so it's like creating a sandwich effect, so you've got, say, I'll have three layers of carbon, then that, and then I'll put another one or two layers on the other side. And um, this stuff, it's got a kind of hexagon pattern through it to let the resin pass through, um, and it sometimes can print through, so if you only put one layer of carbon on top of it, you'll see all the hexagons kind of through the carbon. Um, so yeah, after that layer, I will put maybe two layers, maybe another layer of that one by one I've got there, and then another layer of this two by two here. So that'll be five layers in total, and obviously this in the middle, so it should be pretty rigid, this. Every time I record a video, this phone goes off. can't believe it, I should really switch it off. Um, so the first two layers that I'm going to put in will overlap here. Um, I'm going to keep every other layer just in the middle section so that I've not got five layers basically kind of wrapping around this corner so that it's only two layers thick. It's minimal for trying to kind of get to this point and that should make it a bit easier when it comes to fitting. So yeah, stick on the time lapse. I'm going to cut some fabric and I'll show you how it goes in the mold. Well, that was pretty nerve-wracking, I'm not going to lie, because once that's down, it's down, you get away with it a lot more if it's just a standard 2K, it just seems to lie better about that when you're trying to keep that centre line good. Well, I think it turned out alright. We'll find out, obviously this is the underside, so once we see the finished part, it'll be the reverse, the reverse so hopefully there's nothing trapped under it. So I'm just going to crack on, the next layer should be a bit quicker to put down.
Well, four layers on and the, the Sonic Core, what do you call that? Reinforcement layer, I suppose. I'm sure there's a technical name for it, but that's that's what we've got. So I was going to put the 2 by 2 in this side, but to be honest, I'm not going to see it anyway. So I just put another layer of the one by one. Uh, so the next layer is the release film. So I've got a kind of, when you're doing resin infusion, you need a, oh, I should have really learned these names. Infusion mesh to let the resin go through and also a release film. And this stuff I've got is like two in one. So it's a bit easier to lay, a bit more expensive, but it does save a little bit of time. So I've got that and then we've got the vacuum bag. So that's what we're going to next. That's a good little point to stop and just explain to you what we're doing. So we've got the infusion mesh that's got the peel ply on the back of it already. And you see at this side that I've put some slits into it. It's just to help with the contouring around that kind of back bevel there. Um, I found that on the last time I done the roof that it really did help. Um, I've got some, so we've got the feed. I'm going to bring the resin in from this side, this tube here. And Obviously the end of it will go down into the resin pot and a big amount of, what's this camera doing, there we go, a big amount of tape on there just so the, the bag can go over it and then there's a little infusion line there, spiral line that just lets the, the resin run along there and then the, the vacuum will suck it down to the other one at the other side and then it'll go over to this side and back into the, the catch pot that I've got. Um, this just if you're trying this at home, watch plenty of videos. I've just lo watched loads, and this is kind of a system that works for me. So, your project might be different. So, there's different ways of doing things. This is not the right way or the wrong way, it's just what works for me. Um, yeah, so next bit now, we need to first of all, before we do the, the vacuum bag, we need to put pleats in this, which is basically the same tape as this. You bring it up, back down, just make loops. We only need, it's not too bad this mold, maybe need three or four along each side and that just allows when you're putting the bag around, you fold the bag around about the pleats and it gives you excess bag in the middle so that it can suck down into all these corners and radiuses and things. Gives you a little bit more to play with. So that's what I'm going to do next, just put, as I say, four, three or four on each side and then we'll go on to putting the bag in it. Time lapse probably made that look easy, but oh, it's the bit about it I hate the most, I think. Uh, but yeah, it went fine. Hopefully, we don't get any leaks, but I've not had one yet that hasn't leaked, to be fair. When you come to the last one, there's usually always either too much bag or too little bag. I'm sure the professionals um, don't have that problem. <laughs> but I do every time, so looks like there's plenty of bag there. What I'm going to do next is I've got a few heaters I'm going to just heat on the part just to get get it up to temperature currently currently room's 21 degrees and um, so if i can get the part up to between 23 25 degrees that keeps it nice and warm just for the resin to go through it and yeah we'll start pulling a vacuum down fun bit now well i'll just take you through the setup so i've got my, my heater here and this one over here just putting some heat into the part this is the the vacuum chamber and the pump i've got Say vacuum chamber, it's just a really big resin catch pot basically. And um, all the resin, you're not really wanting much resin to come down here, but as the air's pulling out, it will ultimately pull a bit of resin through. Once it starts pulling through just resin and all the air's out, you can clamp this side off and you can leave the other side open for a little while just to pull a little bit more resin in, depending how how much resin you want in your part. So over here I've just got the scales and things set up. So yeah, scales, hardener, various infusion resins, resins. I use a mixture of fast and slow hardener, 
Um, don't want it going too slow, don't want it going too fast, so that's ready to go. I've got my little digital thermometer there just to keep a hold, keep a hold, keep an eye on the temperatures of the part. So I'm just going to start pulling the vacuum and hopefully it's all good. I'll leave it pulled for 10 15 minutes, going to have a cup of tea, and hopefully when I come back, it's not get any leaks. So wish me luck. Doing good guys, uh, I had to turn the camera off and try and get a bit of charge in it there as the battery was starting to go but yeah the infusion is nearly there, that's been one hour, one hour so we're just that sort of picking up this wee dry spot here and it's starting to make its way down, pulling the air out of the tube here, I don't know if you can see it, it's hard to see on my screen but I think you can see it, so yeah it's starting to pull the resin out, I'll give it another little minute, finish this piece here and then I'll just shut off the, the line here at this side and let it just take some more resin into the part. And then we'll get it covered up. I've got some heat blankets I'll put on it overnight, switch off these big heaters and that should get it heated up to like between 40 and 50 degrees and let it let it cure at that for 24 hours. So yeah, I'll stick a wee bit of time lapse on, we'll just get it all covered up and then I'll see you tomorrow. Well folks, it's the next day now and the part's been finished for 17 hours roughly. So what I'm going to do is now uh, take the heat mats and everything off it and just let it cool down slowly back to room temperature. I uh, had a little bit of a fuck up last night. I'll show you what happened. So yeah, last night the... I find it. This was the side that was into the, the vacuum chamber and I closed that off with a little clamp there you see and then I was putting my heat mats and stuff on I couldn't get one of them to work it took me a little while, got it to work eventually while the other side was still pulling in the resin from the cup and after I got it all covered up I went to my bed and I was lying in bed just ready to go to sleep and then I realised that the other side that was sucking the resin out of the cup I never clamped off so yep straight back up I got and yeah indeed it pulled some air through the line you can you can kind of see it, it's went through the line and you can see it starting to come through this tube um, so I got the vacuum pump and I attached it to the, this line and started pulling any air that went back into the part back out I've, I'm kind of, got my fingers crossed here that, um, that I've saved it There's, I really hope I've saved it because that carbon way down, well I thought it way down very nice at the beginning that V shape, so I'm hoping that the part's fine because obviously the other piece that I had of it has got a distortion through it. Um, but we'll keep our fingers crossed. I'm going to take this off just now and I say just let it cool down to real temperature before we lift it out of the mould and see what, we're, see what we've got. <laughs> Okay, let's see. It's all cooled down now, back to room temperature. Let's give it a go. See what we've ended up with. I'm a ticking time bomb that goes up easily. You always know which button you should push, baby. I'm a ticking time bomb that goes up easily. Just a you.
good to see this guys. Yes. I'm not gonna lie, I'm ecstatic with that. Now, if my mold was polished, which it isn't just now, this would come out with a perfectly gloss finish. But you can see the sanding swirls that are on the mold, so that's just transferred over to here. Um, I can't be bothered polishing the mold because honestly, the, all these parts are going to get clear coated, so they're all going to get sanded back from this point to give it an even finish and then clear coated. But just the weave, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but the weave pattern is beautiful, especially up that V. Yeah, the pattern looks pretty nice, even round the corners here. Everything looks spot on. And the hardest bit, let's see what that's like. So, this is a reverse part that goes behind the boot lid. Perfect. Not the last one I did had little pockets of air in there, but you probably seen me making it. I was pushing in my lollipop stick into this corner really tight because this tight the radius goes back on itself quite quite a lot. So I'm really happy with that. Nice, very very nice. Right, so I suppose the next step is I might give it a quick polish just to see how it comes up, see if I can get any shine here. But as I say, it's going to get clear coated anyway. And it's a bit late tonight, but I will start trimming it, trimming it up a little bit and then we'll set to work on cutting the roof off.